For many couples, the holiday season is the perfect time to pop the question, and now the real planning begins. Yeah, wedding planner Latoya Von Gretchen joins us now with practical tips for planning the <laughs> wedding of your dreams. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I think once you get over the yes part of it, it's yes. like, where do you start? Yeah. What is mm. the first thing you're going to do? The first thing you need to think about is a wedding date. Okay. What's special to you with you and your fiancé? And where, when do you want to get married? Do you want to get married in the spring, in the summer, in the winter? What date is special to you? Okay, so one, per one thing people always say is you need help. Yes. Um, but then they have all these websites out there that teach you how to do it. I mean, right. when do you decide whether you should actually employ somebody to help you or you can do it yourself? So my experience is, is that you always should hire a professional. Mm -hmm. When you're getting married, you still have a life to live, and life will start lifing on you and getting <laughs> away. Uh -huh. So you always want to make sure that your wedding is in the forefront so you can either hire a full-time wedding planner that can do everything for you, and all you have to do is make the decisions, or you can be a DIY couple, plan it yourself, and then hire a coordinator that comes ah, into the mix that's maybe smart. two to three months before. Okay. Because there's yeah. so, so many things I didn't know, because we did, Tanya and I both did smaller weddings, but... Sure. I didn't even know like how much different charges are on different days. Like if you get married on a Friday versus a Saturday yes. versus a Sunday. Yes. I Very. imagine that's a big part. Budgeting is a big part of for your job. For sure. So the average budget right now for 120 people to 150 people in the Midwest, big metropolitan city, is about $68,000. Holy moly. Wow. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that's more than a down payment on a house it in is. some cases. It definitely is. But it's a celebration of okay. love. Okay. So what I always tell all of my clients is, yes, the Internet is telling you that the average budget is about $35,000. Yes. But if you're in a big metropolitan area, it depends on the guest count, and you're not going to be able to do a wedding for about $35,000. It's definitely $68,000 and up. Ooh. Now, don't get me wrong. You can do things lower, but there are compromises that you have to make. Okay, and so where that. would you say people should start compromising? Well, it depends on the couple and what you're interested in. So it depends on the style of a wedding that you want. If mm -hmm. you want a wedding in a hotel type of a, a banquet style mm -hmm. wedding in a banquet room, mm -hmm. you need to make sure that you are willing to pay the $68,000. Mm. If you are interested in doing anything different, then you can save money. Maybe you're doing it at a private residence. Maybe you're doing it at a public park. Mm -hmm. There are some ways to be able to save money. It just depends on what you want. Okay, so you say point. after you set the budget, what's next? Mm -hmm. After you set the budget, then you need to start looking for a venue. Okay. For sure. Kind of think about the guest count that you're looking to do, how big of a wedding, the style that you want, and then you can kind of hone in a perfect budget from there. Let me ask you this, because we're talking about budgeting and number of people. So what yes. do you tell your clients, say, um, okay, I need to cut down the number of people. Mm -hmm. How do they relay that to their family without hurting feelings? Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Imagine so that's the top it, part. It depends on who's paying for the wedding. Okay. Mm. So if it's the couple that's solely paying for the wedding, then that means that they can control their costs from there. Mm -hmm. If you are including other stakeholders, which is typically parents of the bride or the groom, then you also have to be able to compromise and give them an option to be able to invite people as well. Okay, so what kind of tips do you have when people start trying to hone in on a date? Because you said that's one of the early things mm -hmm. you have to do. Is it better to plan a year in advance, two years in advance, three months in advance? Sure. What, what, do, what right. are your suggestions so on that? So what I look at is if you are within 2024 right now, just say if you got in, engaged right around Christmas and you mm -hmm. want to get married in 2024, you can pick a date that's special to you, but understand whatever venue that you might confirm that you love and fall in love with, they might not have your special date available. So you need to pick a secondary date. Mm -hmm. Just in case, if you're getting married in the summertime, which is super popular time to get married, yeah. you want to be able to pick a second date because most likely in 2024, those dates are already probably booked. What are the cheaper days to get married? I mean, obviously a weekday, but not a lot of people want to do that. So right. is it then Sunday, Friday nights, or? Fridays are cheaper than a Sunday. Okay. And then also people are looking at getting married on Thursdays now. They're getting looking at getting married on Wednesdays and Tuesdays. And if you think about it, if you have a destination wedding, typically people get married during the week. Yeah. So even if you are having a local wedding to where you live, what's wrong with doing it during the week? And who can come can come, and who can't, they can't. And the less people that you invite, the cheaper it is for you. Mm -hmm. Unless people that actually can, can come. come. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, so we say the venue is probably where your biggest expense is going to come in. Where's your second biggest expense, and how do you save money on that? So the second biggest expense, in, in my opinion, is memories. So thinking about a photographer and a videographer, those run 
a, a, a really, really high cost only because of what you're getting. You're having these people be with you at least six to eight hours, which is a very long time to be able mm -hmm. to cap capture the entire day. So you're paying for that, and then also you're paying for the editing, which is after the fact. They're mm -hmm. editing all the photos, editing all the videos. So it's not just for the time that they're there, but also for the time that they're editing all of your footage. And I imagine don't have a family or friend do it. Unless that's their actual career. Correct. Okay. Absolutely. Because those Absolutely. videos can come back horrendous. And then you're not going to have a friend or family member anymore. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so Absolutely. True. Absolutely. Oh, these are fantastic tips. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. You're very, very welcome. Lots of good information. There's so much to get into when you're just starting to get into those planning yes. stages. Yes. The uh, budget is the big tool. Jen, you dot genuu.com, correct? It's genu.com. Genu.com. Yes, and that is the platform to be able to help you figure out your budget. Your budget. Okay. That I is a tool that. for couples. Thank right. you yes. so much, Latoya. We appreciate Latoya. it. You're very welcome.